Hi, my friends. Hey, thank you for joining me today. I am Lisa Louise Cook, and we are going to talk about one of my favorite tools we've covered here at the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. It's Google Books. Who doesn't love over 10 million digitized books and over 25 million cataloged books? And of course, the beauty of the 10 million is they are typically older books, historical books, uh, books in the public domain or um, out of copyright. So they're perfect for genealogy research. This time what we're gonna do is take a look at the newest features over at Google Books. I'm gonna start you right off with my absolute favorite, the one I'm most excited about, but I also wanna just take you on a quick tour of the changes that they've made to the user interface and the tools that you should be looking for. So let's head on over to Google Books. So the way to get to Google Books is really easy. Of course, you can just Google it. Uh, go to google.com and type in Google Books. Just make sure that you actually get the correct link. Sometimes it's below a couple of ads, but I like to go to books.google.com. That way I know that I'm there and it looks very much like google.com. I'm just going to search for a county history that I often dig into uh, for my Burkett family, which is the Randolph County, Indiana. So I'm gonna type that in. put in history. Okay, now not every book is full view or fully digitized on Google Books. So a really fast and easy way to check out the books that are fully digitized, which typically just kind of clears out the more recent books, is to come here on the results page and you'll notice there's a tools button. You should see a drop down kind of filter menu right here. If you don't, just click the tools button. You can see it toggles that menu. The first item in the filters menu is any view, which just means any book on Google Books that meets your criteria that you searched for. But I want to see just the fully digitized ones, the ones that are free. So I'm going to click the down arrow and select full view. Now, all the books that I see here, typically all the older books, are showing up and that's because they are fully digitized, absolutely free to read and download. The very first one here that I see listed is the one I was looking for, which is the Randolph County, Indiana County History Book. And uh, this was published in 1882. So I'm gonna click read to get over to the book. If you haven't been over to Google Books for a while, this is going to look a little bit different. Now, as you know, about a year or so ago, they launched a new user interface. It's probably even been longer than that now that I think about it. Uh, but now they've tweaked it to, I think, in some very positive ways. The main difference is we're going to see this menu along the bottom. But before we even look at all that, I promised you my favorite item that they have added to Google Books. And you can find it over here on the left hand side. There's three vertical dots. And that menu actually gives you access to a lot of items that typically are kind of behind the book. If you were to close this book, you would see the catalog entry for it. They've put several of those items over here in this uh, menu on the left. But the best item is this one, view as plain text. We can click this toggle button and it converts the entire book to plain text. Now before, what did we see? These are scanned images. Think of them as like a JPEG or a PNG file. They are digital images and Google has been applying optical character recognition to the books to be able to read the words on the images to make the books keyword searchable but now they're converting the entire thing to text. So uh, I'm going to click down here, thumbnail view, because I just want to get a quick view. You can see how many pages, lots of text. Let's just grab a page of text. Okay, so this is how and why this is so powerful. We're going to click that menu again, toggle on view as plain text, and check it out. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can see the text. They've highlighted uh, different words on here, things I, I searched for the word Indiana, obviously. The beauty of plain text is now I could say, well, I want this section. 
and I could copy that. In fact, I need to grab the whole thing. Here we go. Right click, copy. And now if I uh, open a Word document, let's say, I can right click, paste. There it is. <laughs> it's that easy. In the past, you had to do a screen capture clipping. There was a clipper built into Google Books and you would use that screen capture. It converted to text. It, the box was really small. It was very inconvenient. This is huge. Uh, it's going to give us the ability to utilize so much of the text without having to go through all that rigmarole trying to convert images into text. And um, the thing about that is because this book is fully digitized, it's already kind of gone through the test of, is it in the public domain? Is it uh, available to use for free, copyright free? And it is because they've already covered that. That's why it's fully digitized. So you are free to go ahead and copy any text that you want to include in your projects, in your genealogy database, in a family history book, whatever it is you're working on. And then of course you can cite your source, which I hope of course that you do for all the records that you collect for genealogy. Back over here at the three dot menu and this itself is a new feature. I noticed that I can download the book as a PDF for free. I can also do it as an EPUB if you tend to use that in a, uh, like a reader. You can find it in a store if you need a, a hard copy and they want to see if they sell it over at Amazon or a books, uh, find it in a library. This is going to hop you right over to WorldCat. And this is convenient because it might be that you don't want to order a copy of the book and pay for it, but you might want to be able to go and take a look at an, an actual hard copy of the book in a library, or you might want to see what other uh, editions are available, um, related books. WorldCat is like the world's library. So it brings you right over here and gives you the book and all this great information. So a huge bonus that we can just jump over to WorldCat and check it out. Also, um, something else that's new, keyboard shortcuts. Click this. Shortcuts are terrific because I'm hoping after watching this, you're going to spend a lot of time over at Google Books and checking out all the amazing materials that are over there that's going to really help you with your family history. Uh, you're going to want to be able to navigate as quickly as possible. So you can see here, they've got uh, how you to go to a previous page, the next page, you can press the J, you can do the uh, right arrow, the zoom in and out, page up, page it down. I will have all of this in the show notes for this video, which you will find a link to the show notes in the video description below the video and over at my website, genealogygems.com. We always have a nice downloadable cheat sheet version for our premium members. So check that out if you're a premium member, I hope you are. So the hotkeys make it really easy to um, jump from place to place. There's a K, the K took me to the next page, really easy. What else is in here? Well, we've got help and terms of service. Okay, that's great. Now I mentioned that the catalog entry for this book is kind of behind the book. How do we see that? Well, up here in the right hand corner is an X. If you click that, it removes the view of the book. We haven't lost it. It's right here. But right now we're seeing this button. Blue uh, button says read free of charge. If we click that, we're going to go right back into our book, no problem. But the nice thing about this page is it's got all the details about the book, about this particular edition, and remember we said, cite your sources. So a wonderful feature of Google Books is the source citation tool. If I click create citation, Let's say I want to use the Chicago style citation in my genealogy database for the entry that I was able to copy from the plain text. I can just click copy here. And let's head back over to our Word document and I'm going to paste. There it is. 
So source citation, there's no reason not to cite your sources, particularly for your items coming out of Google Books. And the real advantage of that is later on, you might discover something more about your family. And you might realize, oh, they're probably mentioned in that book as well. <gasps> Where did I get that? The source citation is your breadcrumb trail back to the previous research that you've done. Plus, if anybody ever has a question about what you have put in your family tree, you can point them to the sources that you used. So, gotta cite your sources. Okay, uh, we talked about also that the three dot menu gave you access to how to get your hands on this book, things like get a book and borrowing the book. So I, li I like that three dot icon because when I'm here on the page, rather than having to exit out of it, I can just see all that and get access to it right here really fast. The final thing I wanted to draw your attention to that is new over here at Google Books is the main menu for this item. So you'll see at the top of the screen, we still have a search box and it says search Google Books. So that means if you search there, you're gonna be searching the entire collection. But oftentimes when you're in a book like this, you're gonna to wanna to be able to search for particular names, places, dates, events, topics. How do we do that? in the new menu at the bottom. So now we have this nice new search bar, search in this book. So I'm gonna type in one of my family surnames, Burkett, and press enter. These are all the pages in this book that mention Burkett. And check this out. Okay, so I'm gonna click page 424. This is my great, great grandfather's farm out in Wayne Township. I'm gonna to use the zoom tool here at the bottom in this new menu. And we're gonna zoom in. Woo, there we go. H. Burkett, it's Henry Burkett. He's got 100 acres. Fantastic, I love that these old books have these plat maps and um, here's another tool you will find down in this menu. Zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire map one more time. And the clipper tool is right here. Select a clip. When we click the scissor icon, now our mouse has turned into a clipper. And I can grab just this map. And notice that it took a lot of the text, which is kind of crazy because this is a map, so it's a bunch of jumbled text, but we have the image. If I copy this link for this image, and I open a new web browser tab, I am going to paste it and press enter. There's my image. <laughs> so I'm able to screenshot right out of the book and save it to my hard drive. How? Right click on it, save image as, and then I will save it to my hard drive. That easy. I have the JPEG now on my hard drive. So. This is a terrific tool. So there you have it, so exciting new features over at Google Books. There's never been a better time to go search for information about your family history. And if you'd like to find out more about your family history, be sure and one, subscribe to the channel, click the subscribe button here on YouTube. Two, head on over to genealogygems.com and you'll find a red button on our homepage for my free email newsletter. It's a great way to stay in touch with what we're doing here on the YouTube channel, as well as our free podcast. And as I mentioned, premium membership, which gives you access to many, many more video classes and all of the downloadable cheat sheets. So until next time, thank you so much for listening, my friend. I'll talk to you soon.